It is a rare, often unpredictable chronic autoimmune disease that affects approximately 31,000 to 67,000 Americans. We're going to learn more from neurologist Dr. Suresh, but first, meet Teresa, whose unexpected diagnosis changed the course of her life. Let's go behind the mystery of myasthenia gravis. Take a look. Well, I was 24 years old when I started my performing arts school. Um, I was a wife and I was a mom of two kids. And I was working about 60 hours a week and trying to get my business off the ground. When I started getting sick, uh, I noticed that my arms were very weak and I felt like I couldn't hold my head up. My neck was super weak and I would, was getting headaches a lot. I was very scared because I went from being such a healthy person to barely even being able to get out of bed in the morning. I didn't know what was gonna happen. I didn't know what my future held and I knew I was sick. I just didn't know what was wrong. The Balancing Act met with Dr. Nirja Suresh, a neurologist at the University of South Florida, to learn more about this chronic disease. Myasthenia gravis means grave muscle weakness, which is exactly what patients experience with it. So myasthenia gravis is an autoimmune disease uh, where the body attacks itself. And in the case of myasthenia gravis, it tends to attack the muscles. What happens is that muscles don't contract because the messaging system between the nerve and the muscle is affected. One of the hallmarks of myasthenia gravis is improvement with rest and worsening with activity. There are two forms of myasthenia gravis, ocular and generalized. The ocular symptoms include double vision or droopiness in the eyes. For generalized myasthenia gravis, it can affect multiple areas, including your speech, swallowing, having difficulty keeping your eyes open, trouble breathing, as well as weakness in the arms and legs. When the symptoms occur, it can be intermittent and it can be very severe. For over a year, no one could explain how Teresa went from a trained dancer to barely being able to get out of bed. Appointments with her primary care physician, meetings with several neurologists, and even visiting with therapists to deal with stress all resulted in more questions than answers. I kept getting tests run and everything came back normal. Nobody could figure out what was wrong with me. Couldn't walk even from the bed to the bathroom without assistance. Um, I was having a hard time feeding myself. I had always been such a tough person. I'd been the one taking care of everyone. And I got to a point where I just couldn't do it. There's a wide range of both symptoms and severity that causes the diagnosis to be very challenging. And sometimes if your provider isn't able to pick up on those symptoms very quickly, it becomes very difficult. And sometimes people wait months, if not years, to get diagnosed correctly with it. Once MG is suspected, there are tests available to confirm a diagnosis. So myasthenia gravis can be diagnosed with antibody serum testing, meaning that they, there could be blood work that we can do to diagnose this. There is electrodiagnostic testing, which means that we can stimulate certain nerves to take a look and see if your muscle gets weak over time. The other testing that we have is confirmatory testing by sometimes trying treatment and see if symptoms improve. got to a point where I couldn't manage things anymore on my own. I was just having a lot of trouble breathing at home and swallowing and chewing food. I had lost quite a bit of weight and the breathing was getting to be really hard. So I went to the emergency room and the doctors there um, had some suspicion that I possibly had myasthenia gravis. They wanted to do a diagnostic test to rule it out or to confirm whether myasthenia gravis is what we were dealing with. After um, they gave me the medication, I went from being so sick to being able to sit up on my own. My eyes opened brighter. My, I was able to move my arms and legs. They didn't tell me that it was gonna wear off. Um, they came in about 15 minutes later and I was starting to get weaker again. But at that point, they finally knew what was wrong with me. I had hope that maybe I could someday get my life back. Coming up, Teresa's life post-diagnosis. We'll be right back after this.
approximately 15 to 20 percent of people with myasthenia gravis experience at least one myasthenic crisis. Let's go back to Dr. Suresh for more. Myasthenia crisis is when uh, someone can have very severe symptoms to the point that they may have respiratory depression, meaning that they may need ventilatory support. The crises can occur at any point, unfortunately, but often we see them in the setting of stressors or even things like severe exertion, infection, uh, and those are the most common causes of that. And certainly there, we've seen a lot of patients get diagnosed at their very first crises, unfortunately. You know, at first I was really excited that I finally had a diagnosis, but then I realized this isn't going to go away. There was no cure for this. A lot of the mental parts of living with a chronic illness really set in. I reached out to the Myasthenia Gravis Association of Colorado, and they put me in touch with a neuromuscular specialist, which is what I needed. Once I was able to meet with the neuromuscular specialist, I was able to start managing my disease. And I just kind of had to learn, you know, what my my threshold was and what I was able to, to do on a daily basis and learn my body and learn to listen. So it's very important to feel that the patient is in the driving seat when it comes to treatment options. Unfortunately, there's no cure for myasthenia gravis, but there are multiple options that can be helpful in controlling myasthenia gravis symptoms. Thymectomy is a type of surgery where the thymus gland is removed. The thymus gland has been associated with myasthenia gravis symptoms. Some of the lifestyle changes that patients can make include maintaining a healthy diet, exercising, and coming up with a good regimen along with your physician, as well as being part of support groups and networks to help them cope with symptoms. It's very important to make sure that you're having an open dialogue with your physician about symptoms and how that affects your day-to-day -day living. In November 2020, Argenix, a global immunology company, premiered the first ever MG documentary film series called A Mystery to Me. The docuseries illustrated the perseverance of three individuals as they navigate the challenges of living with MG and adapt their lives to accommodate the debilitating illness. I decided that being part of this docu-series would be a wonderful opportunity because if I could um, help somebody with my story, it would be worth it. It was such a great experience and I'm so glad that we were able to meet these wonderful people and to do such a beautiful piece. You know, if I can make it easier for another person who is having the same uh, symptoms as I was having, if I can help get them diagnosed faster by raising awareness for myasthenia gravis, it is so worth it. So for newly diagnosed myasthenia gravis patients, I want them to know that there's hope, support, and ways to manage symptoms to improve quality of life. It's been 21 years since I got diagnosed. I have since had another child who is now 16, and my day-to-day -day now is fantastic. I've learned to manage my, my illness quite well, and I've learned to listen to my body and prioritize what I need to do on a day-to-day -day basis and change things up as I need to. For patients that are newly diagnosed, there's a lot to learn. Um, do your own research and be your own best advocate. Don't give up and don't settle for anything less than what you want in life. You know, keep fighting for quality of life. It is possible. You just need to learn to manage it well and get the right people on your team. For more information on myasthenia gravis and to watch the docuseries, A Mystery to Me, visit mg-united.com or you can go to our website, thebalancingact.com.